Good morning. A zero to one economy is a brand new industry where companies are racing to develop new markets and introducing new technologies and standards to create monopolies. And this is what China itself is hoping to achieve in the low altitude economy, to create monopolies across entire groups of industries, including ones that will develop later, which we cannot even conceive of yet. Because it's a zero to one, industry standards need to be developed as we go along. We don't know what the safety protocols need to be, for example, for heavy drones operating in major cities, or what technologies for the drones actually work best in windy climates, or where they might get lots of rain or fog, or where the visibility isn't good a lot of the time. But the first companies that do figure these things out, and the first country that does so, they're going to have deep and durable competitive advantages. The Chinese government has announced the creation of a new agency to coordinate the development of what they call the low altitude economy, involving electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. I'm just going to call these heavy drones to save time. China believes they already have a huge head start on all this technology. They already make most of the drones in the world, and they have near monopolies on electric batteries that they will be using to power these drones and the supply chains to build everything else. And they have ambitions for fast growth. In about three years, they expect that the air traffic control systems and service facilities will be mostly done. And by 2030, the industry association here believes there may be 100,000 heavy drones in operation. The prices for them will drop, making them more affordable for households and especially for companies. Here is zero to one at work as new industries spawn with tech advances in AI. The drones will be essential use in logistics, farming, forestry, search and rescue, city planning, utilities, travel and tourism, and they'll be especially valuable in developing countries. Insiders expect the size of this new economy to be over $400 billion in five years, and there are more than 100 companies and institutes already working together to make it go. And these companies are already making breakthroughs. E Hong is a publicly traded company here, and they just announced a revolution in battery technology for heavy drones, the first manned flight with solid state batteries, which lasted over 48 minutes. Solid state batteries are ideal for certain conditions and can make for longer flights, 60 to 90% longer. And that's a key aspect also of zero to one, as engineers figure out what works best and when and why and develop new parameters around those discoveries. Xiaopong is another company that's just built a flying car, which they claim is easy to learn how to fly, and they've booked orders for over 2,000 of them. It's called the Land Carrier, and they have some YouTube videos that we'll link to. Since this entire industry, this entire economy is new, China needs a lot of new people for it. There's a shortage of drone pilots as of right now, so they need to catch up there. Fortunately, the field of heavy drones is considered a cool place to be, so there are lots of applications for the schools that offer the training. For this school in Shenzhen, the number of students doubled this year compared to last, and they're struggling to hire more instructors for them. And that's another problem we are always bumping up against in Silicon Valley in the US, where the best opportunities are in the private sector, and it's hard to find good instructors willing to leave the private sector to take teaching jobs. The same here, demand for qualified operators is ticking higher by companies here in China who need experienced technicians for drones used in logistics, tourism, and surveying. As of today, there's a shortage of a million skilled workers. There is another race underway between the different provinces and cities for talent and investment. As this low altitude economy develops, the advantages become obvious and so are the hazards of falling behind, let alone not doing it at all. It's entire industry chains and will impact many other industries as well. The value chain for this industry in R&D, in the manufacturing of everything really, airframes, chips, batteries, rotors, then the maintenance and repair industry, then the schools that teach how to operate them and build them and maintain them. 
then naturally come the positive impacts on all the industries which can successfully incorporate heavy drones. So regions in China are competing and cooperating to ensure that they have a piece of what's going on. The Chinese call this area the Jingjingjie, the Beijing, Tianjin supercluster of cities, and they've already approved 33 projects. There are also huge projects in the Shanghai city cluster. But for now, the Guangdong, Shenzhen area is in the lead, and they may stay there because that's where so many of the drones are made now. And so South China has got all the manufacturing chains for that, plus all the electronics. But all the provinces in China have announced that the heavy drone economy is a key focus in their economic development, which means they're providing money and land and creating university departments and institutes and industrial parks to get new companies going. The industry countrywide is growing at a year-on-year -year rate of 34%. China's strategy to build out this zero to one, this low altitude economy, should sound familiar to anyone who understands how they've been successful in so many other industries. They develop a plan with benchmarks, they organize the industry from Beijing at the national level and on down through provincial capitals. They get universities and private companies involved, they put them all in the same place, and they throw lots of money into the problem. And 10 years later, the world outside China looks up and realizes they've completely taken it over. And here they go again. This is Zhangjiajie in Hunan province. Be good. Everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. He who knocks.